just zoom in a little bit here. Make sure we can see everything. Yeah. There we go. We'll start in the machines and then we'll go back we'll back out to the quizzes and the mathematics. And then we'll just keep going back and forth between the machines and the mathematics. Because really honestly, it's it's all about it's all about both. It's it, using the machines to help us with the math. Tony, would you mind killing one one light? Thank you. That's, per that's actually perfect. Just enough. Just enough. A little bit dark. So in case you weren't here and you need a chance to watch the uh, the videos, this was um, time. L1 is time in seconds. And this is distance in feet of me on my bike running down the hill. I'm so glad we did it on Monday and not Tuesday because I would have died. <laughs> Please. I will as soon as you Let me know when you guys get to so these two more data points. We actually, no, probably the first two, don't they? So I'm really glad we did it on a Monday, but it was safe. I want to scroll down two points. There's the last two that you need. He's back. What a beast. <laughs> not a bother, Kurt. Not a bother, brother. So the idea, the idea, and we're going to, it's because you asked a question. I know, I get two. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. So the idea here is we want to look at our data. And what was the question, the main question that we asked? Before we started, because we, we started crunching data, we started analyzing data in class. And we didn't get very far, I want to get back into it today. But what was the overriding question that I think everyone was thinking about at the end of the, at the end of class? We started about halfway through and then we, we still have the question at the end. How many miles per hour? How many miles per hour? Thank you, Amber. Thank you, Dina. How many miles per hour was I going when I crossed 200? Aaron, close. When I crossed the 200 foot mark on the tape, which was, I think, Jacob's group. When I crossed the 200 foot mark on the tape, it took me 10.22 seconds data to get that. I think we're using 10.1, though, as a, as a time, I think. We're going to we'll get the regressions, and we'll see that again. Oh, yes. the man. Yeah, but we'll come back to that. Well, I want to get us caught back up, because I, I guarantee a lot of us have lost this regression model because you did the quiz. So we'll go back through the steps again, get the model back. I just need the top two numbers. Oh, the top two? Yeah. Sure. Scroll back up. Here we go. So what I want to do is look at the data. Remember why we didn't like a linear model for it. Get the quadratic model that we got, and then get through this quiz. Because I want, I, the whole point of the quiz, the quadratic model is actually very, very simple. Once you've decided it's curving, and you've decided to use the quadratic model, it's just a matter of pushing a different button. But it's then what you can do with it. I think the last thing we said on Monday was it's what the, the police do with the little hair dryer when they're, when they're checking your speed on the highway. It's exactly the mathematics that that hair dryer is doing that we're going to learn about today. It's called a, it's called a secant line rate, whatever the hell it is, a detector <laughs> hair dryer. It, it, it's, it's a rate of change, an average rate of change, which is what we talked about in class on Monday. And then it becomes an instantaneous rate of change, which we'll get into more on the exam that you're going to do for next week with Usain Bolt and his, uh, and his what's up? Oh, guys, go down. It's got you. Down to the bottom. Once we have all the data, go get a scatter plot. Go look at the data. Go make a scatter plot of your data. If you need to do a little booklet, you have it out. I mean, that's the whole point of the booklet. I gave it my gift to you. You make a scatter plot the same way no matter what kind of data you have. It doesn't matter to me at all. The data for next week on your quiz for next week, should you choose to do it, is about the cancer rates. American males in the United States from 1989 to 97, I think. It's quadratic. You look at the data, it's quadratic. Well, I shouldn't say it's quadratic. It goes up and then goes back down again. So I chose to have you use a quadratic model because that describes that data the best in, those range, in that year range. So I'm going to erase the time and the distance here because that's going to get in the way. And I'm going to I want to make this bigger because I want to want to keep coming back to this. I wish I had two TIs on days like today. Oh, hello, news. Mm, you know what? 